Can you give me a simple case of a two by two? I still got ten minutes, right? A simple case of a two by two that is definitely singular. Okay, so one of them is one zero, one zero. All right. And the reason that that's singular is why? Column two, if we call this matrix A, column two of A, and maybe we want to make it a little bit, yeah, spice it up, is going to be two times column one of A. So do you see a problem with this, though? This statement, so this implies immediately that if I had the second column of this thing, that's 2 times the first column of this thing. And that implies immediately that if I want the 0 vector over here, um, that means I have 2 of this one plus negative 1 of this one. And that implies immediately that a times the vector uh, 2, negative 1 is equal to the 0 vector. And we said that if a is non-singular, the only solution to the homogeneous linear system is the trivial solution, right? This is a solution to the homogeneous linear system, but it's definitely not the trivial solution, right? Where did all this exist, though? What, what space did we analyze? Did we analyze in vector space or in scalar space? Vector space, right? But what's our desire? Scalar. We want to know, can we somehow get this thing into a scalar that allows us to say whether or not these things combine together? And this is where I would immediately go to my Math 1C students. I don't know about other Math 1C students, but I know you all suffered through this. Do you have a way? So the whole idea in a 2 by 2 case, I have vector 1. So this is uh, column 1, right? And then I have column 2. In a 2 by 2 case, what is the only possible way that this thing is singular? If, so um, if we say that this is A, and it's 2 by 2, A is singular if and only if what? A2 is some scalar multiple of A1, or vice versa, right? OK. Well, let me ask you this. There's a very, very famous problem that we've seen, at least some of my Math 1C students have seen this. If I have a vector x and a vector y, and I would like to figure out using a scalar, so we'll call this thing um, x1, y1, and we'll call this thing x2, y2, and I want to figure out whether or not these things are perpendicular. I want a measurement of perpendicularity. <coughs> a measurement of perpendicularity. And I want my measurement of perpendicularity to be 0 when they are least perpendicular and non-zero when they are most perpendicular. Do you remember what that was? Dot product was a measurement of parallelity. It was the background information for the cross product, which meant to say that if I looked at these two vectors, so if I call this thing x1 and I call this thing y1, and I call this thing y2, and I call this thing x2, right? And then we went through this whole derivation, if you took my class on this. that the area of this parallelogram was a very, very good proxy measurement for perpendicularity. If these two vectors are parallel, guess what that area is? Zero. If they are non-parallel, that area is non-zero. So the question is, well, how do you measure that area, right? What is it? What would you have to do to actually measure that area? 